So we left off, last, well, two weeks ago now, before spring break, we were talking about these dosage calculations. And here is one of the more complex ones that we'll have to deal with. And that is, we have an order here of 250 units. And our label is saying 100,000 units per gram and 250 milligrams per 4 milliliters. And we could go ahead and we could use the proportion here or we could use the dosage calculation formula. Either one of those would have to be applied two or three times to get to our answer. So I am going to use the dimensional analysis just because that's quicker for me. And remember in the dimensional analysis, we will start with the doctor's orders and we'll basically use unit conversions to convert it to what has to be administered to the patient. So we'll start off here with that order of 250,000 units. So I'm going to have to get rid of the units, period. We notice that our administ what we're administering, this must be a liquid medication. So what we're administering to the patient is measured in milliliters. We're going to put units on bottom, but we do not have a link or a conversion from units to milliliters here. Our only link to units is to grams. We have the one gram is 100,000 units, or 100,000 units is one gram. So we have eliminated units so far. We still have to get from grams to milliliters. Well, we don't have a link from grams to anything else other than the units, but we do have milligrams to milliliters. So that's just a conversion that we know that one gram is a thousand milligrams. Now, as we mentioned last time, I could have just changed this one gram to a thousand milligrams in that conversion and saved a step, but I'm doing it out the long way here just to, to show every possible step. And then finally, now we have this relationship, 250 milligrams and four milliliters. So I'll put my milligrams on bottom and we are going to milliliters, 250 to four. So the milligrams will cancel out and we are now in milliliters. Now here's a case where I would do some canceling with my zeros. I would cancel out three zeros here and three zeros there. So that's gonna be just a one. I'd cancel out this one zero along with these two zeros and cancel out three zeros here. So this is just 250. This is a one, a one, and a 25. So we have 250 times 1 times 1 times 4 milliliters is 1,000 milliliters. On bottom, 1 times 1 times 1 times 25 is 25. We divide that out, 1,000 milliliters divided by 25 is 40 milliliters. So we would be administering 40 milliliters of that medication to the patient. Any questions on those? So then the next step then is to move into IV flow rates. And IV flow rates can be given in one of several ways. We have milligrams per hour or milligrams per minute. If it's given in this form, usually it's going to have to be converted because the infusers, if, if you're using an electronic infuser or if you're doing, setting it up uh, manually, there isn't a good mechanism for regulating milligrams per unit of time. So generally, our final result will be milliliters per hour or milliliters per minute. Or if you're doing a manual setup, the way you would regulate it, GTT, if you recall, means drops per minute. That is the old-fashioned setup where you have to play around with the, the little valve and time it and count how many drops you're infusing, infusing in per minute. Okay, so let's take a look at these. We're going to start out with if we infuse 8,000 milliliters 
over four hours, what is my flow rate in milliliters per hour? Well, that's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to divide it out. We set up our rate from our doctor's orders, the 8,000 milliliters over four hours, and then we convert it into a unit rate. Remember when we talked about ratios and rates, we said unit uh, rates are often, almost always expressed as unit rates. And to create a unit rate, we just divide by the denominator. So we divide by four there, gives us one hour. Divide by four on top, gives us 2,000 milliliters. So 2,000 milliliters in one hour is 2,000 milliliters per hour. So that's relatively simple. Uh, we might have 750 milliliters infused over 40 minutes. If I want this given in milliliters per hour, we just have to do a little bit of conversion work. So we're starting out with the orders again. 750 milliliters over 40 minutes. And we simply have to convert the minutes into hours. So minutes will go on top so that they cross cancel. Hours on bottom. And one hour is 60 minutes. So the minutes cancel out. Now we could do cross canceling here if we wanted to, or we could just multiply it out. These numbers aren't too bad, so I'm just going to multiply them out. Um, 750 milliliters times 60 is what? 45,000 milliliters over 40 times one hour is 40 hours. We divide that out. It's a Friday, so I'm going to use the calculator. The little hamster doesn't want to get on the wheel today. Okay, thank you. Uh, so it's 1,125 milliliters in one hour, or 1,125 milliliters per hour. So going into milliliters per hour is relatively simple, especially if it's given in milliliters over some unit of time. We might be given... Twelve thousand milligrams over eight hours. As our order. And if we look at the label, we might see that it is listed as five milligrams in two milliliters. And asked to give that flow rate in milliliters per hour. So again, we start out with the rate from the doctor's orders. That is 12,000 milligrams over eight hours. Now we have to get rid of the milligrams. We want to be milliliters per hour. So we're going to get rid of the milligrams. Milligrams go on bottom. So they'll cancel. So milliliters will be on top. Five milligrams and two milliliters. Milligrams cancel out. So we'll multiply this out. 12,000 times 2 milliliters is 24,000 milliliters. 8 hours times 5 is 40 hours. We divide that out. We are going to get 600 milliliters per hour. So that's just 24,000 divided by 40. We start out with an order like, like this of 750 milligrams over, let's go 20 minutes. And our label might be 25 milligrams 
in four milliliters. And we want our flow rate in milliliters per hour again. So again, we, as always, we'll start out with the order, make it a rate. 750 milligrams over 20 minutes. This time we have to get rid of both the minutes and the milligrams. It really does not matter which one we get rid of first. So I'm going to get rid of the minutes first. We're converting those into hours. So one hour is 60 minutes. So the minutes are gone. Right now we are in milligrams over hours. So we have to get rid of the milligrams. We want to be milliliters over hours. So get rid of the milligrams. And we do have a link from milligrams to milliliters. 25 milligrams is 4 milliliters. And so the milligrams are gone. So now we go ahead and we multiply this out. 750 times 60 is going to be, what, 45,000 again? Times 4 is 180,000 milliliters. And on bottom, 20 times 1 hour times 25 is 500 hours. If I divide that out, was that 360? Milliliters per hour. Any questions so far? Okay. Well, then our next step is to bring that down and to start putting it into milliliters per minute. So if our doctor orders... Twenty four thousand milliliters over eight hours. And I want to know what's that going to be in milliliters per minute. Now the first thing we need to know is what's our rounding going to be. Um, for this class for milliliters per minute, we're going to go to two decimal places. Now that might change on whatever class you're, you're taking. Um, bless you. Um, the reason we're doing two decimal places here is the next step would be to convert to drops per minute. And your drops per minute are almost always either rounded to a whole drop or to a tenth of a drop depending on whether you're doing it manually or using an electronic infuser. Um, so having two decimal places at this place allows us at least one decimal place of, of precision once we, we go to that next level. So anyway, we'll start out with our orders. 24,000 milliliters over eight hours. And we need to get it in milliliters per minute. So we're going to put in the, cancel out the hours and go to minutes. One hour is 60 minutes. Hours are gone. We multiply them out. 2,400 or 24,000 milliliters times one. 24,000 milliliters. Eight times 60 is 480 minutes. So we divide that out. I believe that comes up to what? 500? We divide by 480. Is it 50? 50. 50. Okay, thank you. I don't know why I just wrote 480 up there anyway. It is 50. Thanks. Like I said, some days the little hamster refuses to get on the wheel. Okay. Well, our next step would be then to, to start out in milligrams. So let's say our doctor orders... 20,000 milligrams to be administered over four hours. And the label here says 50 milligrams and two milliliters. And I want to know what's my flow rate going to be in milliliters per minute. So 
So as always, we'll start out with the doctor's order. 20,000 milligrams over four hours. Now in this case, we've got to get milligrams to milliliters and hours to minutes. Again, it doesn't matter which one we do first. I'm going to go ahead and do the hours first. The hours were on bottom here, so they had to go on top here, so they'll cancel. One hour is 60 minutes. Now the hours cancel. So now we're in milligrams over minutes. We've got to be milliliters over minutes. So we've got to get rid of those milligrams. And we do have a relationship, 50 milligrams in 2 milliliters. Now the milligrams are gone. We have milliliters on top and minutes on bottom, which is what we want. So 20,000 times 1 times 2 milliliters is 40,000 milliliters. Over 4 times 60 is 240. Thank you. I don't know what that was. Um, was that 12,000 minutes? I believe so, right? So we have to divide that out by the 12,000. Dividing by 12,000, we get what? Three and a third? 3.33? Yep. Perfect. So now we're going to move into, let's take our doctor's order, and we're going to throw several steps in here at once. Um, let's say we are prescribed 15,000 units, or 15,000 milligrams. We won't throw units at you quite yet. 15,000 milligrams over three hours. Our label says 500 milligrams in 20 milliliters with a drop factor of 12 drops per milliliter. Now I think I mentioned it before that drop factor is just describing what's called the viscosity or the thickness of the fluid. Um, the thicker the fluid is, the fewer drops it takes to make a milliliter. The thinner the fluid is, the more drops it takes to make a milliliter. So we are looking at our flow rate now. We want it in drops per minute. So once again, we start out with the doctor's order. So 15,000 milligrams over three hours. We do have to change both the milligrams and the hours. I seem to have been doing the hours first every time, so I'm going to do that again. Hours going to minutes, one hour and 60 minutes. So the hours are gone. Next, we have to go after those milligrams. So we do have a relationship from milligrams to milliliters. 500 milligrams equals 20 milliliters. The milligrams are gone. And so far, this is where we've been stopping our problems at milliliters per minute. But now we have to go that extra step to turn our milliliters into drops. And that's where the drop factor comes in. This 12 drops per milliliter is the same as saying 12 drops equals 1 milliliter. It's an equivalency, just like any other measurement conversion equivalency. So I have to get rid of milliliters, so I'm going to put milliliters on bottom, and we're converting to drops. And 12 drops equals 1 milliliter. So now the milliliters are gone, and we do have drops on top and minutes on bottom is what we want. So on top here, we got 15,000 times 1 times 20 is 300,000 times 12 is 3,600,000 drops. Over 3 times 60 times 500 minutes is 90,000 minutes. 
If we divide that out, what is that, four drops a minute? Is that right? Normally what I would do on one like, is it 40? Okay. Thank you. Um, normally on one like this, what I would do is I would cancel out some zeros to make it a little easier on myself. I would cancel out, like, let's see, we've got two here and one here. I would use that to cancel out those three. So now then 15 times 20 is 300, times 12 is 3,600. Three times six is 18, times five is 90. I think that's the problem is I had an extra zero down here, didn't I? Of course, using the calculator really doesn't matter. For me doing it in my head, the extra zeros confuse me. So. Okay. So like I said, that drop factor is then our link between milliliters and drops. Let's do another example or two of that. Now we're going to look at some examples where we're going backwards. So let's say our doctor's order is for... 9,000 milligrams over two hours. The label is saying 15 milligrams and two milliliters and drop factor about 20 drops per milliliter. Once again, we want this in drops per minute. So we will start off with the orders. 9,000 milligrams over two hours. Now for some of you, it might be easier to calculate this out at each step. Personally, if I'm doing it in my head, I would be doing that. I would be dividing out the two here to get that as 4,500 milligrams for one hour. Then I'd do the next step and I would combine those numbers and I would do it step by step. So you don't have to do it all out in a straight line like this. I'm going to do this one the way we have been doing it. Then I'm going to come back and I'll show you what I mean by doing it out step by step. So here, let's get rid of the hours. One hour is 60 minutes. So again, the hours have canceled out. We get rid of the milligrams. We have up here that 15 milligrams is 2 milliliters. Now I know I noted this last class, but you'll notice when I'm filling out these conversion factors, I put the units in first. And I always put in the unit I'm canceling out first. I knew milligrams had to go on bottom here because it was on top, and I needed to do that to cancel them out. That just, it keeps me from getting things in the wrong spot. I put the units in first, then I look back at the equivalency and see what number has to go with which unit. So now I want to go from milliliters into drops. So milliliters have to be on bottom to cancel that out. Drops on top, and it's 20 drops per one milliliter. So the milliliters cancel. So now we multiply on top here. We have 9,000 times 1 times 2 times 20 is what? 360,000? Yeah. Drops. Over 2 times 60 times 15. Was that 1,800? Minutes. Now we're going to divide that out to get, what is that, 200 drops per minute? Okay. Which is actually a little fast, just so you know. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at how we would have done this if I had done this step by step. You know, if doing this out in one big long line like this isn't working for you, When I'm doing this in my head, just to avoid working with such big numbers, first thing I would do is divide out the two. So now I'm at 4,500 milligrams in one hour. Now 
Then I would do the hours. About 4,500 divided by 60. Seventy-five milligrams per minute. Then our milligrams to milliliters, we had fifteen milligrams and two milliliters. So the milligrams cancel out. Um, two times seventy-five is one hundred fifty over fifteen minutes which divides out to be 10 milliliters per minute. And then I would use my drop factor, get rid of milliliters. So 20 drops in one minute. Milliliters cancel out. 10 times 20 is 200 drops in one minute. I often would do it this way because I don't use a calculator. So doing it in my head, you can see this keeps my numbers smaller. Um, for you guys using the calculator, it's probably easiest just to do it in one big long line like this. But I just wanted to show you this because there will be times where you might get stuck without a calculator. It is a little simpler if you do it just one step at a time to keep the numbers smaller. Any questions so far? Okay. So now what if we're given the other side of this situation where we are told a 1,000 milliliter bag is running at, oh, let's do 150 milliliters per hour. How long will it take to infuse? So here we're looking at starting with the volume. We're not looking at finding the flow rate. We're given the flow rate here is 150 milliliters per hour. We want to know how long it's going to take to infuse this. Well, we're just going to do unit conversions here. We're starting out with 1,000 milliliters, and we're going to try to convert that. The relation, only relationship we have here is 150 milliliters per hour, and we can think of that as being 150 milliliters is equivalent to one hour of flow. So we're going to put milliliters on bottom and hours on top. 150 milliliters is equivalent to one hour. So now 1,000 times 1 hour is 1,000 hours. 1 times 150 is 150. So we divide that out. 1,000 divided by 150 is 6.67. That right now is in hours. So that would be 6 hours. And now on my calculator, what I would do is I would just subtract the 6. So I have my 0.66666 hours. I'd multiply by 60 to turn it into minutes. So it's 40 minutes. So that comes up to be 6 hours and 40 minutes of flow. How do you get the 40 minutes? Okay, good question. We had the 6.67 hours. So we had that 6.66666 hours. I subtracted the 6. I took the 6 off of there as whole hours. So I subtracted it off. So what's left is I have that 0.666666 hours. And to convert that into minutes, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, I'm just going to multiply by 60. So now, likewise, we could have a 2,000 milliliter bag. That is flowing 
that. Twelve milliliters per minute. Well, let's let's make it a little more reasonable. Let's do forty milliliters per minute. Let's just say find the time to infuse. Find the time. So once again, we're starting out with that volume of 2,000 milliliters. We make it a fraction by putting it over 1. Now again, the only equivalency we have here is the 40 milliliters. That's equivalent to one minute, one minute of flow. So we've got milliliters on bottom and minutes on top. 40 milliliters is equivalent to one minute. This would give us our time in minutes right now. Let's go ahead and just complete that calculation. So 2,000 times 1 is 2,000 minutes. 1 times 40 is 40. Well, 2,000 divided by 40 is just 50 minutes. So since it was less than an hour, it doesn't matter. If it was more than an hour, more than 60 minutes, we would probably want to convert that down into hours and minutes. And we will get to one of those examples here in a little bit. All right, so let's say that we have a 1,500 milliliter bag. Set with a flow rate of 36 drops per minute. The label has a drop factor of 12 drops per milliliter. So again, we're going to start out with that volume. Fifteen hundred milliliters. We have to get rid of milliliters. The only thing up here that we have that involves milliliters is our drop factor. That 12 drops per milliliter is, is saying that there's an equivalency of 12 drops equals 1 milliliter. So 12 drops is 1 milliliter. So the milliliters will cancel out. Right now we have that bag in total number of drops. Now we can go from drops per minute using the flow rate. Drops are on top here, so I want them on bottom down here. So minutes are going to go on top. And this is saying 36 drops is equivalent to one minute. So the drops are gone. Right now we'll have our time in minutes. So let's go ahead and calculate that out so far. 1,500 times 12 times 1 minute is, what, 18,000 minutes? And on bottom, 1 times 1 times 36 is 36. If I divide that out, we get 500 minutes. So 500 minutes. So we would want to convert that into hours and minutes. So I'm just going to do 500 minutes. One hour is 60 minutes. I cancel out my minutes. 500 hours over 60, which is going to give us, what, 8.33? So now it's the same type of thing. We have that 8.333. We take the 8, that is our whole hours. The 0.333, we multiply it by 60, which is going to give us 20 minutes. Any questions here? So we might have a 
bag that is labeled with 50,000 milligrams of medication. That might be flowing at thirty drops per minute, and the label on the bag might be showing us twenty milligrams in five milliliters and drop factor bless you of 10 drops per milliliter so again how long will this take to infuse well we're given the starting mass this time in milligrams rather than a volume in milliliters so all that means is we're gonna have to go one more step we're going to get rid of our milligrams first. 20 milligrams equals 5 milliliters. Next, we've got to get rid of the milliliters. We have 10 drops equals 1 milliliter. So now we're in total drops. We're going to get rid of drops. We have 30 drops is equivalent to one minute. So we multiply this all out. 50,000 times 5 times 10 is what? 2,500,000 minutes. Over 1 times 20 times 1 times 30 is 600. So I'm going to just go ahead and put this in the calculator. So 250,000 divided by 600. Did that really come out right? Apparently. I got it. Okay. Wow. This one's going to take a while. So we have 4,166.667. That's minutes. So I'm going to divide that by 60 to put it into hours. So that's 69.44 hours. So that's 69 hours. Just like before, I'm going to subtract the 69. I'm going to subtract the total hour, the whole number of hours. And I'm going to take that 0 0.44 minutes and multiply it by 60. To make it 26.7 minutes. That one got ugly. Okay, now. The final thing we can do with these is we can look at finding the drop factor. So let's say we have a class, there's a couple of examples. Let's, let's say we have a bag that starts out um, a 1,000 milliliter bag. Is started at 7 p.m. Your shift starts at 9 p.m. The flow rate is set to 40 drops per minute. At 9, at the start of your shift, the bag contains 400 milliliters. The label on the bag, though, has been smudged, so you can't read the drop factor. Find the drop factor. So 
So the first thing we want to look at here, 7 a.m. was 1,000, or 7 p.m. was 1,000 milliliters. 9 p.m. is 400 milliliters. That is 600 milliliters over two hours. So we have that to start with. Now looking at this, we don't have anything else here that equates milliliters to anything. Um, we are going to want minutes because the drop factor, this uh, flow rate is in minutes. So let's go ahead and change, convert this into minutes. So I put hours here and minutes on bottom. One hour is 60 minutes. So the hours cancel out. And I'm going to make it easy on myself and cross cancel the, the 60 and the 600. If I divide them by 60, 600 divided by 60 is 10. 60 divided by 60 is 1. So that's 10 milliliters over 2 minutes. Or 5 milliliters per 1 minute. Now a drop factor relates drops to milliliters. I do have this flow rate up here of 40 drops per minute. So I'm going to put minutes on top to cancel them out. And drops on bottom. 40 drops equals one minute. So the minutes will cancel out. Five milliliters times one is five milliliters. One times 40 drops is 40 drops. Looking at that, we see that this is milliliters over drops. A drop factor is always drops over milliliters. So what this is saying is that 5 milliliters is equivalent to 40 drops. We can flip that over and say 40 drops is equivalent to 5 milliliters. Then we can just divide that out. 40 divided by 5 is 8. So that is a drop factor of 8 drops per milliliter. Any questions? Well, the next thing we want to start looking at is we want to start looking at dosages based on weight and body surface area. Body surface area, by the way, I'm generally going to abbreviate just BSA. Let's start out with the weight. Um, many medications have a recommended dosage by weight. And the label may look something like this. Two milligrams per kilogram per eight hours. So what this is saying is we can have 2 milligrams for every kilogram of body mass per 8 hours. So there's really a couple of different rates in here. This is saying 2 milligrams is equivalent to 1 kilogram. It's also saying 2 milligrams for 8 hours. So as we're working with this, we have to keep this one in mind, the fact that we're dealing with an eight-hour time period. But that's not going to come into play till the very end. We're going to focus on this race rate within that relationship, within that label. So if we have a patient that comes in weighing 132 pounds, 
Well, the first thing we see is that the label is not in milligrams per pound, it's milligrams per kilogram. So we have to convert that into kilograms. So pounds are going on bottom so that they'll cancel. Kilograms on top. And the relationship is one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Technically, it's 2.208. Um, but in the medical fields, they use 2.2 is close enough. So the pounds will cross cancel. That's now 132 kilograms over 2.2. Should give us 60 kilograms. Now this calculation right here happens often enough that we are going to take a shortcut. Rather than doing out the dimensional analysis like this and doing the conversion factor, we are going to start just taking the shortcut of saying 132 pounds, you divide it by 2.2 to give you kilograms. Now we can take that 60 kilograms and we can convert it into a dosage. 60 kilograms over one. And this is saying that two milligrams is equivalent to one kilogram. So I'll put kilograms on bottom, milligrams on top. Two milligrams equivalent to one kilogram. Kilograms cancel out. 60 times two milligrams is 120 milligrams. 1 times 1 is 1, so that's just 120 milligrams. Now I mentioned before a couple weeks ago that I often use a mixture of dimensional analysis and the proportion method. Um, here is one where I would most likely use a proportion. I did dimensional analysis here to keep this consistent. But some of you may have looked at that and said, okay, 2 milligrams per 1 kilogram how much is that going to be for 60 kilograms? And then you cross, multiply, and divide. 2 times 60 divided by 1 gives you the 120 milligrams. And that's just fine if that's the way you think. Um, just to stay consistent for this class, I'm trying to do everything out with dimensional analysis. Okay, it is break time. It's 9.21. Let's take a break. Come back about 9.31.